Hey everybody, Annette Green here. I've got a project that's been on the back burner in my brain for a while, and now that I have some extra time on my hands, I thought I'd share it with you now. I'm gonna turn all this stuff into this. Okay, but before I begin and show you um, how I did it, I'll just talk about all the supplies that went into this. So the whole thing started with these wonderful brushes that I had, these blending brushes that are so great. Everybody's got these right now, they're real soft. I started off with these four from, I believe, Picket Fence Designs, and then I ended up getting um, even more from Tailored Expressions. Um, and they're and they're wonderful. I, I'm used to using this here, you know, these guys on my spinner. But like many of you have discovered, these just blend so smoothly and so nicely. I love them. Uh, so then the problem was how to store them. And I know that Tailored Expressions has a little turntable-y thing, but I, I have more brushes than what it holds. So I just decided I'm going to make something myself that maybe uh, works a little bit better for me. So the idea is to build a little base. And this is just a, you know, like a piece of tile from Home Depot. Pretty neutral looking. And then to hold the actual brushes, I have these little, how long are they? Let me measure. These are, um, well, they're about two and seven eighths, but maybe they call them three inch. Anyway, they're little bits of PVC. And then the brushes can sit in there like that. That's the plan. So of course, I don't wanna just use these. I mean, that UPC code is actually like right on there. Like you'd have to paint over it. And this is a really shiny, smooth plastic. So I've been thinking of some different ways to do this. And I think what might work is to use some of this here, Rust-Oleum Metallic Paint and Primer. This is an oil rubbed bronze, and it says right on there, wood, mastic, wood, metal, plastic, and masonry. So, I mean, at this point, you've seen the finished project, but at this point, I'm actually starting from the very beginning, and I don't know if it's gonna work. So, we will see. But the plan is to kind of have those on there, all painted and finished, and then have enough space at the end for my little cleaning thing here. This is the thing you would run under the water to clean your brushes. So just a place to put that, like that. So I'll take you through the steps of what I did. did one coat um, so if I was gonna leave them this way I would do a second coat but I'm looking at them after one coat and I'm already deciding they just look too plain to me um, so I'm thinking about some ideas like wrapping them with washi 
Uh, this is the Graphic 45, the older washi tape that they used to carry. I don't know, I don't think they carry it anymore. Um, it has a lot of typography on it and uh, phrases, and it's sort of collage -y, so it doesn't matter which way you put it on, but actually it fits pretty nicely, like doubled. So I think I'm gonna go through and do that to all these. I like the way that looks. with the double layer of washi. Where there was some overlap, I found that I had to use a little bit of glue just to make sure it didn't peel up. And I'll just make sure that that overlap part lands in the middle there. So I have these kind of lined up here and ready to go, and now I need to adhere them down to the tile. And we are gluing plastic to tile, so my husband seems to think the best thing to use is epoxy. So I got this from Home Depot. I don't think it matters what brand or where you get it, but this is what I'm using. It dries in five and really, really sets in an hour. Uh, I got a little cup here and I got my gloves and I'm gonna mix it up. Um, and so this is the beauty of making YouTube videos is we learn stuff and then we can pass it on to you guys. And uh, my biggest tip is when you cut out the directions, uh, when you rip the package open, uh, make sure you don't cut out the Spanish unless you speak Spanish. So I salvaged the English directions out of the trash and I think I know what to do. <laughs> I'm basically gonna squeeze out with equal pressure both of the contents at the same time. I don't know how much I'm gonna need so I'm just gonna put about that much and I'm gonna stop. And this particular brand of epoxy has this um, reusable cap, which is great. So I'll cap that up and then stir, stir, stir. I don't know how long, but I'm just gonna stir a lot. And then I'm gonna use this little stick to spread on the bottom of each of my tubes and stick them down. I think I'm supposed to stir until all the bubbles are gone. I kind of remember that with using a different, like a jewelry epoxy. Uh, but you guys can correct me if that's not right. Um, but I do think you have to stir for quite a while. So instead of watching me stir, I'll be right back. Okay, I put that one down already and I'll show you how I just kind of use my little stick here and blob some on the rim. I don't think I need a whole lot. This does dry clear, so I'm not too worried about having too much, but I don't want it to be crazy. And then I'm looking for my seam here. There it is. And I'm just gonna get that right in there. And I'm gonna press down kind of firmly for about 30 seconds before I move on to the next one. Now you could take a lot of time and you know, draw pencil lines and get this really, really perfect, but I'm just excited to get the project going, so I'm just kind of winging it. Okay, uh, fun little fact I just found out. Um, wow, this stuff gets warm. It's very warm. And in the short time it took me to do that many, this stuff has sort of like <laughs> developed a skin and solidified. So um, that's hot. I'm not gonna put it in the trash but I will put it aside over here and I'm gonna get a new stick and I'm gonna put more in here. All right, well, today is the next day. So I decided that um, even though these held very quickly, no problem, uh, when I went to stick a brush in here last night after only an hour, it was still a little tacky. So I, I just gave it an overnight of drying time and it is good and solid and it feels really great and nothing is tacky in there anymore inside. And so I have my little space over here for my brush cleaner, perfect. And then I've got all my little brushes that I'm gonna stick in here. 
Now, a couple of things that I will mention. Of course, if you don't have this Graphic 45 washi, you can use any washi. Um, some washi tapes are stickier than others, so you may find, um, depending on yours, that you may have to use a little adhesive as well. Um, I definitely used a little bit of um, art glitter glue where I had some overlap, as I might have mentioned earlier. So that's how she looks. Looks great, right? I think, I mean, I'm happy. And, and the reason why I, I selected, you could do a square configuration or whatever you want, but I know that um, for me in my limited space on my, my big table here, I don't need big round spinners anymore. This one is the only one I want on my table. Round things to me kind of get in the way. You can't have things up against a wall if they're round. So this one actually could be up against the wall or on a shelf or something. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, there is a little bit of the, can you see the little shiny bit of epoxy showing here? That doesn't bother me too much, but um, it's because I was kind of wiggling around getting these in place, and so some of it seeped out. If you see that happening, you could probably get in there like with a tool of some sort, like a, here's a piercing tool. I could have gone in there and scraped that away right away as I saw it oozing out, but you know, it doesn't bother me. I'm happy with it. And so, just to let you know, I saved the receipt to give you an idea. Okay, so this is, again, Home Depot. I spent um, about well, almost $6, $5.97 on the epoxy. Uh, let's see, the tile was a dollar and two cents. And then the PVC things were called three quarter inch PVC coupling deep socket. So I had to buy 12 of those and they were $1.14 a piece. So that was $13.68 for the PVC. So, so far that was about $20.67. And then I can't remember how much I paid for the spray. I bought it at Walmart. Um, I'm sure it was four or five dollars. So I'm gonna say this project supply-wise costs about $25. And I did it in an afternoon. So if you like DIY stuff, and you have an afternoon to spare, and you wanna make something like this, I encourage you to do so. I'm sure there's all kinds of creative, clever things you could do instead of these. I mean, maybe you could even use a, a toilet paper tube. I mean, all the toilet paper we've been buying, we got a lot of tubes to mess with, but I just wanted this to be super strong and sturdy, so I used the pipes. So that is it for me today. I hope you guys like the project. Let me know what you think. And especially let me know if you try it. I'd love to see. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.